it is time to get started. Thanks for tuning in either while we're recording this, while we're hosting this, or we, when you look at this at a later date. Um, we're thankful that you have stopped in. And um, we're going to be talking about what it says right here on the screen, generate more revenue from guests who already love you. So that's the keys to effective reselling. Before we jump into the slides, I did have um, a little bit of information that I think will um, go right along with what we're talking about. And it's like how people are using their RVs. And it's interesting. Uh, there's this study. I'm not sure, exactly sure when this was uh, taken, but it does say that 90% of those that own RVs actually take at least three trips with their vehicle or trailer each year. And that's in addition to a regular yearly vacation. So uh, that can give you the idea that uh, when you can get people to return, uh, people are willing to go on multiple trips, obviously once they invest in that RV. And so this is what we're talking about, how to capitalize on those opportunities, especially for those um, that can frequent your particular park, um, maybe more than once in a year, which would be great. So let's get into um, what we're doing here today. So a little bit about us before we get into the meat of everything. We partner exclusively with RV parks, resorts, and campgrounds. We're an Arvic member and we have the M5, which is an RV park centric marketing system that does focus on reputation, resale, reach, and retargeting. What about uh, your host here, the illustrious Mark Rowan? That's me. Um, so I grew up on a West Virginia campground. I've been co helping companies for more than 20 years with their online presence. And I've uh, been running this agency since 2014. Do have one wife, four kids, and one dog. We have a couple extra kids this weekend. My wife's brother-in-law and sister-in-law is moving from D.C., to Virginia Beach, and we're watching the kids for the time frame. So, got two little tykes. So, yeah, that's a little bit about me. But I'm on to the issue at hand. We'll say that what we'll leave with today. So, the idea is we're going to have three areas your park can upgrade their resale strategy, AKA how to get more guests to return, and some action items that we'll be able to do, put in place for your park. And then we can answer any questions that someone might have. So along those lines, obviously, if you're here now or if you're um, watching this later, drop in the comments any question. Also, let us know where you're coming in from, uh, where you're watching in the U.S. It would be great to know that as well. Okay. So we talk about this each time about fixing what is broken. So much like this RV, uh, can't do much with that. So if we... Uh, are really doing a reselling right, um, it's broken. So we want our guests to return, right? But all possible, if it's not there once in a generation all the way across the uh, states trip, uh, we want the uh, maybe the ones that are more regional to come more often. So we gotta take action if we want those results. And so we see some common issues that we're gonna try to uh, address on some level today. So inconsistent communication can be a problem. Just kind of willy-nilling it when it comes to uh, how you're going to talk to your guests, whether they're um, first-timers or you're trying to get them to come back. Uh, so that's one issue that we see. The lost opportunities. Um, so yeah, if you're not communicating, opportunity to bring them back uh, is a big issue as well, right? Um, lack of organized information. So you know, whether or not uh, you have all of it together uh, and don't have a good way to utilize that information or you're organized, but you don't have the information. So a couple things there. You don't have any outgoing messages. Um, so you're just kind of responding to whatever someone might um, ask you about or that sort of thing. And then you're not measuring effectiveness. That is another issue. Um, so if you don't measure, you don't know what to improve on. So that's something to look at as well. All right, all right. So we have an opportunity to increase profit when it comes to reselling or returning guests. A repeat guest is easier to book than a new one. That's if you provided a great experience. And, um, you know, we, you know, if whatever you have on site is not so great, then, 
you know, that's got to be fixed first. But yeah, if you are doing something wonderful, then once again, they'll be more ready to come back. So the, real, the reality is it can cost five times more to acquire a new customer than it does to keep current ones. So that's across all business, right? So almost 65% of a company's business comes from repeat customers. So um, just keep that in your back pocket as you think about um, what it means to have returning guests. So here's some stats. We had a couple, here's a few more. They're gonna boggle your mind. A 5% increase in customer retention can increase a company's profitability by 75%. That's pretty good. I like those numbers. On average, loyal customers are worth up to 10 times as much as the first person. So the first time they come in, if they keep coming, you're gonna get that 10X return potentially. And 86% of consumers say loyalty is primarily driven by likability and 83% say it's trust. So we talked about that a good bit in our previous two months when we were addressing re reputation and all that. So it all ties together, right? So if you are have a good reputation throughout your business, whether that's a online review or everything else that you're doing, it's gonna drive into this likability and trust worthiness that you're building with your guests. All right. So before we get into the meat of the reselling um, tactics and strategies, we gotta start with good communication. Once again, we've talked about this. You can look at the previous webinars we've done. They're out there for to be consumed at your leisure. But be reachable when it comes to uh, communicating with your guests. You can have accurate info across the web, so you don't want to have the wrong website information or the wrong phone number on some random website that somebody might be able to find you on. So that's a big part of that. You can have an optimized website that works well and has a chat um, feature to it that allows people to easily connect with you. Uh, you're going to acquire and respond to reviews on a regular basis. You're going to have that Google business profile or what used to be Google My Business set up with the right way uh, and optimized. You're going to be utilizing social media, which ties in uh, to uh, what we're doing here. That means posting regularly and responding in a timely fashion. So that's a little bit of a review of what we talked about in the previous two months. That's the groundwork in order to really build on and be good at also reselling. So if you're not doing these, let's address that first. All right. So we're going to resell like a champ today. That's what we're going to learn about. Um, we're going to talk about the three C's. The CRM is one. Campaigns are another. And finally, content. And this guy has a wonderful place to create content out by this lake. So um, yeah, if you have that, beautiful. Customer relationship management. So CRM, most people probably have heard of this on some level. Uh, here's a beautiful picture to go along with it. And we're going to dive a little bit into that. What's it look like? And, um, you know, what, what do you need to do about it in your situation with your park? So what is it? It's pretty straightforward, right? It is a software for managing relationships with customers. Wow. CRM. That's exactly what that is. But be a, a little bit farther into the definition here, re, it replaces an array of spreadsheets or databases, apps that many businesses will patch together to track client data. And it allows RV parks in our situation to stay connected to customers, streamline processes and improve profitability. And it is not your email program. So if you're managing everything through emails back and forth, that does not uh, mean you're using a CRM, just FYI. So why are we gonna use this? Uh, what's the purpose behind all that? Number one, you're gonna look at better customer service that you can uh, attend to your guests before and after uh, and during their visit. You can have improved customer retention because of this communication and the information that you're uh, collecting and have on, on your guest. It's gonna make you more productive and efficient in what you do in your business. Uh, you're going to have easier access to customer info. Like once again, like I mentioned, it's not the email program, right? You're just like filtering through like, where was that? Let me search this, see if I can find that person's info. Uh, this helps that greatly. You can quickly analyze data, begin to track all the different things that uh, 
a particular CRM can do with the information that you've been given by your customer and find out what you need to do with that. And you can optimize your marketing strategies, um, which is huge, especially for someone like us who really focuses on marketing. I think that's huge. So the CRM is the back end hub of your marketing. You think your website, think of that as your front end. Um, that's kind of the central or the central, central location of what's happening for all your marketing activities. You're kind of driving people to that. And for you, uh, use a lot, utilizing the CRM is going to be your back office. Uh, across most businesses, 65% usually invest in CRM within the first five years. The idea there. So it does work. The average ROI on a CRM is $8.71 for each dollar spent. Put a dollar into your CRM, invest there, get about nine back. Not too bad. And uh, when it comes to uh, business leaders, 92% believe CRM technology is crucial to achieving their goals. You kind of see what it is, what it can do, but what does not do, what the CRM does not do is replace a strategy. Just because you have a tool doesn't mean it's going to automatically work and you have a great uh, marketing and communication strategy. And it also doesn't replace your human effort. You can't just throw a software. You should, uh, I think we all probably bought things that was going to make our life easier in some way. You can think of gym equipment. Um, uh, it will help you, but you got to use it. Same thing with this. Uh, it does not eliminate staff. Now, on the other things that we do talk about, it can help you reduce man hours and potentially certain things that um, you know you would do or a particular person would would do as far as a daily task. Uh, but it's not going to work on its own, like we said. It's not magically going to provide good customer service. It obviously starts with how you do your business day in day out. It doesn't mean you can stalk guests. So that's not, not, not the point here that you're gonna hound them everywhere they go and everything they say and do online, you're gonna be hyping in. And you can't, can't overcome bad in-person experience. And we talked about that already, right? What we're doing on-site is a huge part of the whole package, right? Doing that well, it's going to lead into um, success in all areas. And it's not equating to reservations only. So um, we're a big proponent of getting a good reservation system in place. Um, and we have some that we would recommend um, if you, people are looking for them. But uh, that's one piece of it. And um, so it's going beyond just the ability to have someone book a site. What it should do is streamline your communications which would mean social media, your Google business profile, web chat, reviews. Those are all things that can be streamlined in one place, as well as email and text messaging. You can automate some of your marketing. Like I said, just like it's not going to replace everybody that works for you, uh, it's not going to replace all the different kind of marketing that you can potentially do with your business. That can help a lot. Reduce your efforts and time. Increase your producti productivity and profit. So which one should you be uh, getting? Uh, I don't know if you've ever had a chance to look up CRMs in your life. Honestly, as I look at this graphic that I found, many of them I've never heard of because there are over 700 CRMs and counting uh, out there in the wild. And there's probably five more that launched today. It is a huge space out there. And so you might be thinking, well, what's that mean? What do I, if I really need one of these um, and should put it in place? Uh, what should I get? And really, it's up to the one that fits your business best. Um, so that's where we come along with an action item. You're going to assess your CRM needs. And here's some things to look at when you're looking into CRM and how that can effectively help you do better with customer retention and return guests and those types of things. You're gonna ask this question, what's your number one most important goal for your business? Once you ask, once you answer that, um, you can also look at what features are must haves. Like you looked at your business, look what you wanna get done. What do you need to have as part of that? How will the rest of your team members be able to adopt it? Is it something that's gonna be used? Uh, and it's always gonna be on the management ownership 
uh, once they put something into place that, hey, this is an important part of our business. So how's that going to work? Is it going to be easy? That sort of thing. So what else does it need to integrate with? Do you have other technologies? We mentioned reservations um, and things of that nature uh, within your business that could potentially uh, have a working relationship with that CRM. And what kind of things are you going to be tracking? What data and metrics um, need to be tracked in your business? And will you outgrow it or is it too big already? Like you have to look at where you're at as a business and see if that's um, that's actually a good fit for your app right now. Um, so that's your action item, assess your needs and you can look at what CRM um, would work best for you. Full transparency, we have our M5 solution has a lot of this stuff. And of course we do do it uh, for uh, parks and resorts. So we think ours is pretty slamming, uh, but anyway, and that's where, what type of customer support is also important. We think we're pretty good at that kind of stuff. So there you go. All right, we're going into campaigns, which is part two of today's Webby. Email and SMS is primarily where we're going to look at and uh, what that looks like in relation to return guests and, and getting more revenue from those types of people. All right, so you got campaign defined. What is that exactly? It's going to be an organized course of action to promote and sell a product or service. So we're going to think about how organized is your marketing right now? Do you have a systematic way of reaching your guests? And what strategic activities are you currently implementing? So these are some questions to think about and related to um, doing campaigns. So that's what the campaign is all about. You're going to be organized, organized. You're going to have systems in place. You're going to have strategies, strategic activities as well. We're going to look at email and text. So here's some stats on email. So 61% of people, uh, when it referring to business interactions, uh, customers, they prefer to be contacted through email. And this is... Um, you may be this kind of person, 99% check their email every day, sometimes up to 20 times a day, which is probably me. I know my email is always open. 81% prefer to open emails on their smartphones. So keep that in mind when you're doing campaigns. 59% say marketing emails influence purchase decisions. So although we all get lots of marketing emails or many different things, and we may delete a lot, it's still a large percentage of people are saying it's affecting them one way or another. Here's another good ROI when it comes to what you're spending for every dollar spent on email, you get $44 in ROI. So if you combine that with your CRM, you got nine to one, one to nine, and then one to 44, put those together, you're getting some very good ROI on uh, utilizing those technologies to communicate with your guests. So there are some different types of campaigns that we can uh, utilize. Um, first of all, a welcome series. So for instance, someone reserves a spot, uh, you can have, I think most people are probably putting this into place at this point, some kind of introductory email policies and different things that the guests need to be aware of when they arrive. Um, and Probably more often than not, it's a one email thing, but this is actually talking about a series of emails. A newsletter, so whether that be a monthly or quarterly or, or even a weekly, uh, just sending out information um, about your park itself or surrounding areas, different things that people can be aware of uh, to educate and inform guests. Special offers, so maybe you have something a certain time of year potentially, or just, hey, it's the off season. We want to try to get a few more people in. We're going to put a special offer out. I mentioned season already. So maybe you, um, many resorts, parks are doing special things on different seasons, Christmas, Halloween, things of that nature, letting them know about that. A triggered series. So you might have more seen this in the e-commerce world where you might leave your 
leave an item in the checkout and you don't actually buy and then like, hey, don't forget to buy. So that gives you an idea of potentially someone takes an action in some way um, online with your website or, or what they're doing. And then you could follow up with a triggered email. A social connect. So, hey, connect with us, us on our platforms, whichever ones that you're utilizing. And a re-engagement. So once again, we're talking about returning customers. So maybe it's somebody that hasn't been with you for a while. And because you have a CRM in place, you know that, and you can find all the people that haven't been to your uh, place and maybe it's six months or a year, whatever the time frame is. Say, hey, we'd love to see you come out again. We're doing this particular thing that would entice them to come. Maybe you do give them an offer. And anyway, you're trying to re-engage customers and guests once again to come and uh, be a part of what you're doing at your park. So here's an example. We mentioned the welcome. Like a lot of times it's a singular email that's going out. Um, so here's another way to do this. Uh, I think it would be a great way to implement something. Someone books a reservation. Welcome, here's your information. And you know, they get this email and it lays out some basics, some information. Um, and then you might also have some information in there or maybe another email potentially that upsells to other things like, hey, go ahead and purchase some firewood or here's some activities, some extra activities that we do that are special. Go ahead and purchase those. Or, or maybe you have a attractions near your park that you have a partnership with and you get a cut of some you know, tickets to these or whatever the case may be. Those are some things you could potentially upsell. But going on there, like uh, this would be considered a drip campaign in marketing terminology. So you could have another, like a drip right after like another day or so later. And it says, while you're here, you know, check out these things on our park. Just kind of giving more information instead of overwhelming everything, maybe in the first email, you can add things additionally as they come on through. Drip two, what to see. Like once again, maybe there's some areas around the park that you would want to let people know about. And maybe once again, you can be offering uh, additional items that people could potentially um, purchase. Um, and maybe you get the benefit of as well. Drip three, we can't wait to see you. So it's kind of like a reminder email at this point. Maybe you're still putting more information about things that they could potentially purchase if they haven't already. And then, you know, hey, it's this week. You're going to be here. Um, this is your information, the final things you need to know. So that's, uh, that's an example of a welcome campaign that could be implemented as far as the different steps. Trip five, forgot about this one. That's like, hey, we'll see you tomorrow. Just an example there. So we're going to avoid these email snafus. Um, this guy's computer stinks and you don't want your email to stink. TLDR, if you're unfamiliar, it means too long, didn't read. So don't cram everything into one email. It's a campaign, remember? So that gives you the idea that it's going to be step by step. Um, don't overwhelm them. That's why we were suggesting the welcome series as opposed to one huge email. So don't overdo it. No one likes spammy spammerton. Um, so you've got to be aware of how often uh, you can email, and especially if it's like a welcome series, but been one thing because I'm sure they're excited about being there and you can probably give them a few more emails than normally would, but like newsletters and things of that nature, you just gotta be, you know, where is the, you know, resistance when, when it comes to too many emails? Um, and there are, you know, there's definitely different areas and in different industries that more emails can work, whereas other ones, uh, I think we all get emails from certain brands and companies that's like every day. Um, so just be aware. Test first and send. Once you start doing this, don't just wing it out there without knowing if it's gonna look and work correctly. And like we mentioned earlier, some stats about how much people are using and checking their email. It's a high percentage of people. We've got to make sure that that's a mobile friendly email. And I'll do it for the heck of it. Um, like we said, one of the issues that are out there uh, when it comes to customer attention is um, they just don't have a strategy 
uh, for what they're doing. So let's look at SMS. 91% would opt in for text from messages from brands. So essentially, um, this is obviously world, I mean, not worldwide, but across all different brands and companies. Uh, but you have someone that opts in, um, because they're going to opt in because they like the company, the business. And so essentially, if they said, yep, that's me, then they're all about um, receiving those. So the 34% will read their messages within five minutes of receiving them. 58% believe SMS is the most effective way for brand communication. Now that's on the business side, right? So almost 60% of businesses are saying this is the best way to do it nowadays. And 96% of marketers using text messages, text messages have said it's helped them drive revenue. So obviously the scene of marketing has changed dramatically over the last 10 years with the uh, smartphones. And so how are you utilizing that? in your reselling strategies. So here's some different types of campaigns with text messages, similar, but a little bit different in some of these. So you can once again do promotions or special offers, send out coupons. I think we've received these. If you've ever opted in, you would get coupons from different companies that you're on lists with. Text to win contest. Maybe you're gonna um, give away some like a, two nights or something like that, um, but you can text this out to, once again, like a re-engagement campaign that uh, we mentioned earlier, um, and you do that for something like a text message, text to win constant contest. Loyalty programs, now you see this in a lot of different businesses, but I think this is an interesting uh, angle to look at in the RV park space, like how can you incentivize the loyalty of returning gas? So, you know, obviously there's going to be those that are traveling through that are, you know, maybe doing a trip they only do once or twice. Um, or you have people that I know, people myself that, um, you know, got neighbors you know, right here with RVs and they're taking their RVs out and they're not always going out of town. They're coming, they're staying in regional places. So how can you incentivize loyalty to people that are already close to you and that would pop in? like we mentioned earlier, taking three trips a year, um, can you get them to come back to your place through some loyalty incentives? Alerts and notifications. So those are always helpful. I mean, maybe there's a weather alert that you need to allow, you know, let your customers know about or something about their booking. You know, there's different things that you could potentially do that can be helpful for your guest. And obviously personalization is huge when you can personalize um, their the message you're sending are great and that goes into a sample sms campaign that we're going to look at right now gathering customer data like birthdays information when booking would be a way to personalize a sms campaign so you're going to track that data in your handy crm that you have and it's going to create or you're going to have an evergreen SMS campaign that auto fires on the correct date. So someone might fill out a form on your site or whatever, and they give them, give you their birth date. And then you can automatically send them a, a message when it's their birthday. It's pretty fun. And um, you may have received these yourself. I know I have at different times from other companies. You can send them a limited time offer or a special during their birthday month and you may not be able to see real close, but you got a little sample here. It's like, hey, John, rumors going around that it's your birthday. Make it a great one. Use code MYBDAY for 10% off with us during your birthday month. So that's just a simple example of how you potentially do something um, on a personalized campaign. So this could be done similarly for satisfaction surveys, loyalty, re-engagement. They're all different ways you could do personalized automation campaigns. All right, all right. So here's some best practices. The guy in the yellow caps psyched to the max because he's got a great text message coming in. Get permission and allow to opt out. So you may have seen this a lot uh, as well in your own received messages. You know, hit stop if you don't want to, you know, receive these anymore. When people are signing up, you can ask for permission. 
things of that nature on a form. Uh, even when they're in the res reservation process or whatever, there's different ways that you can ask it's okay to send. Send at the right time. So, um, you know, you don't wanna be sending out a text message at 2 a.m. necessarily, um, unless it is an emergency alert or something along those lines. Uh, but deliverability and um, as far as when someone's gonna read it, uh, just be aware of timings. You want to get to the point, obviously, text message, there's two reasons for that. Um, you don't want to be boring and just ramble on, but also, you know, text messages cost money. And so the longer they are, the more it's going to cost you. So if you can be concise and informational, um, that's going to be great for not only your guests, but for yourself. Make sure you identify yourself. You just say, hey out of the blue and they don't say hey, it's Mark from Rest and Relax ROI, that uh, can cause confusion and people won't pay attention. And another great way to um, implement a good strategy for customer resale retention is to respond in real time. You send out a text and someone's like, oh, wow, great. What about, you know, can I come in this weekend? And then you don't respond at all. Uh, even though you have an audit, you know, you sent that message out to some people. Uh, have, uh, have something in place where you can do that and it can be very beneficial. Measure what works. Like we said early on, it's one of the issues that we you'll see in uh, reselling in a poor way is that you're not measuring. So once you figure out something that's working, uh, then you can double down on that or, or tweak it to make it even better. So here's another action item we're gonna talk about with Sending a monthly newsletter. So if you're not doing anything at all as far as an ongoing communication with your uh, former guests or current guests, all those kind of things, start doing this. Um, you start the simple way, but you want to stay consistent. I like guests when possible, you know. Uh, tell the stories that um, everybody's unique and got something to say and that you can highlight their time while they're there or whatever. There's just an idea to do that. And shout out your team members uh, as well. It's always a good thing to recognize those that you that work with you and make it all possible. Make sure you're doing good photos and videos. Like you may not, you can't put a video inside an email, but you can definitely link to one. Uh, so think about the quality as far as you know when you share a photo or not. It looks good, uh, so people are uh, wanting to look a bit further with it. The subject matter. So the subject line is huge when it comes to emails. Um, so there's some different strategies on that that, um, that you can uh, look at, but uh, don't just do any old thing necessarily. Uh, look into how that can be optimized so that people will want to read further. So some email software is free if your, not, if your list is not too large, so you can look into that. Um, so, you, you know, if you're kind of ground level starting up with this, you know, there's ways to do that without uh, investing too much capital off the top. I mean, if you got a ton of cash already, which, you know, it's good on you, uh, no problem then. Another stat for you, 77% of marketers have seen an increase in email engagement since 2021. So the last couple of years, it's on the rise uh, for a lot of people. So just keep that in mind. Um, if you're not doing anything at all on a regular basis, take action and start doing this. I think it'll be beneficial for you. All right, we're on to the final part of what we're talking about today, and that's content. And uh, we're going to look at that definition as well. Strategic approach focused on creating and distributing valuable, relevant, consistent content. So those are all keywords, right? It's got to be value. It's got to be relevant to your guests and it's got to be consistent because you could do it like once a year. Um, you know, just don't do it. <laughs> um, it would be better to continually do it in a, in a way that is driving value and allowing people to connect with you on another level. It's meant to attract and retain a clearly defined audience and ultimately to drive profitable customer action. So that's why content and content marketing is done. It's strategic, it's valuable, it's relevant, it's consistent. It's for a defined audience. 
and it's for a profitable customer action to take place. So here's some different types of content. We got several here, blogs, super popular, right? Videos, uh, even more now than ever, as short videos are huge. Uh, you think of TikTok or Reels and Stories, infographics. So uh, you may have, I'm sure you've seen these long form graphics that has a lot of good information about subject matter, case studies, kind of a manual size type of thing that you would put out, ebooks, user generated content. And that's something that definitely parks and resorts can get is people that are there. And I've seen this uh, where people will submit their photos that they've taken and so that's always great. A checklist, maybe you want to put a checklist together uh, for your guests. Like, make sure you do these things um, when you're here. Memes, everybody loves a good meme. Testimonial reviews, make sure you're getting them. Make sure you're utilizing them as content to be shared. White papers is a little more technical, maybe not as much need for that in this space. How-to guides, you can definitely do that as a, as a piece. You know, there's plenty of things to share uh, to the RV life crew about how to do different things and influencers. So there's a lot of people out there that are in the hashtag RV life that are quote unquote influencers. And you might be able to utilize their content for your park in some, one fashion or another. So the content stats, we always like to bring some stats to just back up why we're doing and talking about these things. 51% of content consumption is from organic search. So when people are on Google or Bing, or whatever, they're looking up information, um, they're reading it. That's how they're reading it because they're on their search engines. It's over half. 94% use social media as a main channel for content. So that's where they're distributing their content on a regular basis. Most companies are doing that. Uh, as a piece of how they're doing content marketing. Here's an interesting stat. Well, if you know this, social media use in senior citizens is up 66% in the last five years. So basically we're at 45% of senior citizens are using social media. It's probably all on Facebook, <laughs> um, but they're up. Although my mom's has an Instagram account, she's 77. Um, there are obviously later adopters to these type of things, but we do know that there is a pretty sizable amount of the RV uh, life and RV industry people are retired, maybe senior citizens. Video is the most used with, you know, as far as 59% use video content marketers and businesses. Um, so that's the most common one that people are taking advantage of. So here's some best practices to um, be aware of. You want to be consistent, like I mentioned before. It's going to be high quality content is, um, is, uh, is definitely what you want to focus on as well. You want to use guest data wisely. We talked about birthdays earlier, like you gather that information and maybe other data that you're collecting and you can uh, find that information about, or even just anecdotally what you hear from your guests, uh, questions and things of that nature that you can uh, create content that can help them. Create a communication calendar. So figure out when you're going to do what for creating content for your part. And you're going to build that community on your social platforms. So find out where the majority of your uh, Guests are online, Facebook, Instagram, probably two big ones. Um, and uh, be active there and uh, share your information on a regular basis. And focus on the guest life cycle. So, you know, what are the your guests doing at different times of the year? You know, obviously summer is a busy season for the majority of parks. And um, so what are, what are they doing up until that time? And, you know, what can you talk about before they, you know, plan a trip or while they're planning and, you know, all these different things, what do they do afterwards? So look at your content in relation to the life cycle of them planning trips and, and, and coming to visit. Think about helps, docs, or a help page, or FAQ feedback. All those things are 
great to have on your site. Uh, you know, we talked about a welcome series, like a lot of times you're going to send some of that information up front, like, hey, be aware of these things uh, when you're coming to our park. We already talked about, once again, welcome emails, make those engaging, and that can be a huge benefit. So be everywhere your guests are. Find out where they're hanging out um, online and share your content. And once again, personalized, it's a big part of it. If you can do that, it'll be helpful. People like to connect with other people. And when it has that personalization, that's a big benefit. So here's some pitfalls. This guy is reading some content that is not great or didn't have a plan, took action, didn't really have a plan. Avoid that. Content is just blog posts. Now, if you, you know, if that's all you're able to do, okay, that's great. But if that's not really all that it is, um, you know, it's not just writing something or posting something and forgetting it. That's not all that content marketing is about. And you don't understand your guests. That's huge, right? Um, hopefully, in the industry, you're learning all the time about guests. Uh, make sure you're not writing it from your producing any kind of content from your perspective as far as like what I want. <laughs> um, but even though you're in, in the industry, um, think about it as someone that's visiting. Expecting instant results. So if you're thinking, I'm going to write this blog post and a bunch, bunch of people are going to book, I don't think anyone thinks that, but that's obviously not the strategy here. There's other things to do in marketing when you're looking for instant results, sort of. Um, so that's, it's a long game for content. It's, it's a more about the overall strategy and don't sell too hard when you're, you know, everything you send is like, eh, book now or that sort of thing. Um, you want to provide real value. And sometimes real value is the ability to, for someone to book. Other times you're just telling them some great information or maybe entertaining them on some level. And SEO, we haven't really talked about that. Um, yet on any of our webinars, really, but it's search engine optimization. And so there are definitely, there's a side of that in content marketing, but if that's all you're worried about, that's not gonna produce good content. And just bad content. So what's that? Just garbage, you know, just throwing up whatever, because you know you need to do something. Um, like I said earlier, like you post once a year, like don't do it. If you're gonna do it bad, don't do it. Um, try to do the best of your ability or have someone team that can uh, help you with that. So we got one more action item today in part three of our three C's. We're going to talk about creating regularly. Um, once again, start simple. We said that for email, stay consistent, same thing. So the, those things go together, right? Even the ability to email and all that, or your content is the thing that you can send out on a regular basis as well. So you're going to go with two or three types that I would suggest to do. We can do a blog, video, and or reviews. Those things, I think, are the most valuable things you can do. The blog is going to help your website uh, to have more pertinent information that people need, and, and it does have a SEO value to it. Your video is, what we saw earlier, well, the most consumed or utilized um, platform for content. If people are into videos that are interesting. And of course, the reviews. People want to know what's going on with other people's experiences. And um, so you can use that, leverage those reviews to address even some questions that people have. And obviously, you're, you're hopefully garnering a lot of great reviews that uh, build confidence for your potential guests. So you want to find the best place to distribute those things. So you know, want to look at an email list, obviously developing that, uh, having your social accounts set up and optimized and, and use those on a regular basis. And of course, YouTube is a great one when it comes to video. Uh, so those are the things that we would recommend doing as well. Here's another stat for you. Content marketing costs 62% less than traditional marketing and generates about three times as many leads. So that's a business overall stat, but you can still see how that's super valuable. Traditional marketing, maybe a billboard or newspaper ad, things of that nature. 
resell like a champ. That's what we did today. And uh, we talked about the CRM, the campaigns, and the content we just finished up. Um, hopefully that's been useful and you found some good information and some items that you can take action on. And that's why we call them action items. Um, so that's that. If anybody has questions, obviously you could have already dropped them in now or in the comments section when they're watching the replay, because we'll always have an, our, our eye on that so we can um, go in and, and find out, um, you know, how we can help in that way. So we also want to let you know that you can connect with us online through our social, which is we got Instagram, Facebook, LinkedIn, and we do have a YouTube as well. All right. And next month, we're talking about expanding your reach and filling your RV park. So this is the outbound marketing secrets. So we talked about reputation in the last couple of months. Today, we talked about resale. Next time, it's going to be reach. So that's a little bit more not talking about your uh, existing um, customers, but maybe some that you don't have yet. All right. So love to have you join us for uh, that as well. And you can keep the conversation going with us. We would always love to chat with you. Um, and you can do that by going to book.restrelaxroi.com. So that is um, where you can get a hold of us and we can answer other questions. Maybe we didn't cover today. Maybe you want to go deeper in um, than uh, what we talked about. We'd be glad to do that. All right. That's going to be all for the R R R O I webinar for this month. Thanks for tuning in and we'll catch everybody next time.